Welcome back to Inside Tech's Helma. Joining me now, we have two youth with the Pause for Greatness program. Joining me now, we have Nicole and Kagan. Thank you both for being here. And if you want to just start, Nicole, by obviously telling us who we have with us yeah. also today. We have Dalia here um, coming from the shelter. Dalia coming from the shelter. And I understand Dalia was actually set to just be euthanized, but thanks to this program, Pause for greatness. Um, that's not going to happen. So that's that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And both of you have our assistant trainers in the program who have volunteered. So a lot of hard work, I understand, with with little ones like Dalia. And if you want to just start Nicole by telling us um, a little bit about your involvement and what you do whenever you're working to train animals. Um, I train them to try to make them get new homes, better homes. I train them to earn. My earn my trust and their trust. Is that a hard thing to do? Yes, you know, ma'am. I can imagine because a lot of times these are homeless animals, correct? And they're coming in and maybe not be too trustworthy of anyone. Yes, ma'am. So how do you go about doing that? You know, how do y'all know where to even start? Well, when Miss Diane gets up and calls the class, she like shows it to us and then we, um, and then after she shows it to us, we do it again. We we do it so we know how to do it. Kagan, I also want to know what's hard about this program because you know you're trying to get a dog to listen to you and trust you and obey you. Hardest thing is about the program is knowing that your dog's going back to the shelter. Mm. There are times you're able to adopt the dog though, right? Um, and actually I heard you've been able to do that, is that correct? Yes ma'am. How, how does that make you feel? I mean you become very attached, I can only imagine, to these animals. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Um, it's helped me make positive choices with him knowing that, like, I don't know, it's like, he's helped me a lot. Is it something to see how these animals are changing the lives of, of, of you at the same time mm -hmm. and you're, you're helping them out? Um, were you surprised at how much you you fell in love with the dog that you were training? Oh yeah, I'm a, I get very attached. What would you like to say to other young people or maybe just people watching who don't know a lot about Paws for Greatness and what it really means? That they should probably come out and try to help. Anything about the other animals at the shelter? Because like you said, some of them have to go back, you know, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you've got to send them home. and. They don't have a they don't have a home basically. You're sending them back to the shelter, right? Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking for me. How do you feel about this program and how it's helped you? What I enjoy about the program is training the dogs and sh and and loving the dogs, get to pet the dogs and feed the dogs. And you get to work with them um, every day, right? For for a month, pretty much. You're working with them five days a week. So, is it something you look forward to? Yes. You've been able to come through the program and, and taken part in it more than just once. So what are the new responsibilities that, that you're doing as a trainer? Helping other people out, helping them mm -hmm. learn, learn the basics, what I learned, and, and, and helping them with their dogs. What um, are some of the things? Like right now I know you're doing, we heard Miss Diane say, circles, circles. So what does that mean and what does that really do for, um, for an animal? It calms them down. It, um, it relaxes them. Um, um, if I go fast, it's going to get hyper, but if I go slow, it just wants to lay down and go to bed. Are you surprised by how much you've learned? Yes, yeah. ma'am. How can people in our community help homeless animals? If they want to help out and they want to make a difference, like obviously both of you have, what can they do? They can spay and neuter the animals. Foster and adopt dogs. Foster and adopt dogs. And and don't breed unless you're a responsible breeder. That's right. What's the hardest part? You know, he shared a little bit about it's sending them back. You know, what's the hardest part for you? Um, loading them up in the van and let them go back to the shelter. That's the hardest part for me. Is it worth it though? I mean, at the end of the day, whenever you were able to adopt, yes. adopt the one. Can you tell us about the one that you've worked with and, and what his or her name is? His name is Rusty. Um, I got him when he was like, 10 months old, 10, 11 months old. Um, I've had him almost a year in December. Spoiled. 
<laughs> like whenever I first started training him, he was like okay, mm -hmm. but after after that month of training him, he actually got a lot better. You could tell a difference in his attitude maybe mm -hmm. towards you. What about for you, Kagan? Do you notice maybe sometimes they don't really want to have anything to do with you, and then over that four weeks, do they change or do they stay the same? Uh, they change. They change? Yeah, yeah, they get more interested in you mm -hmm. and things like that. How does that help you, seeing them change? How does that help Kagan? It helps me. Um, it makes me become attached to them. It makes me become their best friend. And realize that you're making a big difference, right? Yes, ma'am. We appreciate both of you sharing so much today and, and taking time out of your, your day to come tell Texoma about Pause for Greatness. I really think it's awesome what you're doing for the community as well. So thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing more about you guys training and teaching others to do the same. So thanks again. Thank you. We just heard from Nicole and Kagan. And you know, wow, what two great youth in such an awesome program. And you know, we'd love for you to share with us just a little bit more about them and you know, how they have not only been touched by this program, we heard that, but maybe in how they've changed your life a little bit through all this. Yeah, these kids never in a million years did I ever think I'd be working with, of all things, teenagers, <laughs> <laughs> having raised two teenage girls. Um, you know, I've always trained dogs and loved dogs, but yeah, these kids have really opened my eyes, and to see the changes in them, I mean, it, it is amazing. It's absolutely amazing to see you know, some of, the, some of them will come in all tough and, you know, the, the big bullies and then they're down snuggling and loving with the dogs. Not these two, obviously. I mean, these two are, have been great from the beginning. Um, the youth are always very polite. They're very helpful. They're great with their dogs. They are good with the dogs. They don't, they're kind to them. They respect them. And, you know, they build that bond of trust. We do a lot of different things with the dogs, teaching them to walk over wobble boards, which is just a board that kind of moves. Um, and you saw how, how this dog was just being up on that table was a little spooky. Sure. So teaching them to walk over something that moves, you know, the, it, it takes a lot of effort and, and it's a trust. And it may take five, six, seven, eight minutes for them to get a dog to walk across a piece of board that long that's going to move. But they do it. You know, their patience comes out, self-respect. They just, these kids fill my heart all the time. And one of the first, the first week, they all want to adopt their dog. That's a no-brainer. They mm -hmm. all fall in love with their dog, 90% of them, not all of them, but 90%. So we talk about that, you know, their ages. They're usually 14, 15, whatever. And we talk about all the life changes that they have coming up. You know, it's hope college, maybe a family. Sure. So it might not be the right time for them to adopt a dog. Now, sometimes their parents will, you know, let them adopt the dog, and the parents, obviously, it's the parents' responsibility. Mm -hmm. Out of our 63 or so youth we've had, uh, we've had four adopt. So, and like I said, it's a parent's responsibility, but Nicole, she was one of those, and I visit with her and Rusty, and, and she takes good care of him, and he's a great dog, and he loves her, and they'll be together for, you know, the next 15, 20 years. Is it week one you're seeing a difference? Is it day one, or is it maybe the second week you're really seeing a big change? The first week, we put the kids and the dogs together. The dogs are going this way. The kids are going this way. It's just, it's kind of <laughs> organized chaos, sure. for lack of a better word. Um, so that's what we work on the first week. The second week, we start building that bond with the dogs. It's when they start, like you saw them doing the circles, we start doing massages on the dogs and really start building a bond of trust between the youth and the dogs. And you start to see things then. Yeah. The third week, as we start doing the tunnels and the teeter boards and things like that, you know, where they're really teaching the dogs to do things, you know, there's another level of trust. And then the last week, the youth actually are the teachers. They will come up, they take turns training each other's dogs, so they all get a little taste of what everybody else has been working with, and they call the class, you know, because usually I'm standing in the middle and I'm barking orders at them and you know, tell them to turn and go and do all these things. And so they get the opportunity to do that. They get the opportunity to be a leader. Kagan and Nicole have both shown great leadership skills, as have many other youth that have been in the program. Um, but they have, you know, specifically asked to carry on and, and you know, want to be a part of it more and more and volunteer. And I, and I think that's great how you said showing those leadership skills mm -hmm. because they are assistant trainers. Yes. So, you know, whenever you see a teenager come in, Obviously, you may not know at that moment if they're mm -hmm. going to be an assistant trainer. No. 
down the road. Mm -hmm. So is it exciting to see that, especially in these two? It is. These two have been great. It is exciting. And we actually had one young man come in, and boy, when he would talk to you, his head was down. He talked very quiet. He didn't make eye contact. And by the time graduation rolled around, we were at Petco, and you know, part of their job is they had that trifold board, and we put a cup in front of it, and the, the uh, public comes in and votes on their trifold. They put a little bone in, in the one that's their favorite. He, this young man was greeting people at the door. <laughs> oh, he was wow. 13, making eye contact, smiling, being polite. That is what it's all about. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously it made an impact on his yeah. life to, you know, do that. You know, these guys get up, they call the class, they encourage each other, they brag on each other. You know, and these are, they go to all different schools and, you know, how the teenagers are, all the <laughs> different rivalries and all that stuff. <laughs> They don't. They put all that aside for the dogs. Yeah. They love each other's dogs. They they help each other. It's just it's amazing. They're wonderful. And I like I said, my heart is full. They just I love them all. The dogs and the kids and it's just great. So do, who do you see the most growth in then? Is it Me. the teens or the dogs <laughs> or you? <laughs> it just seems like all around. It is all around. It is. So we need to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more inside tech. So must stay with us. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. We've been telling you all about Paws for Greatness, a nonprofit here in Texoma. Now we're going to tell you a little bit more about how you can get involved, Texoma, starting with an open house that's just around the corner. Yes, October 25th, this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Obedience Training Club of Wichita Falls Building that's located at 974 Spring Lake Road. We have a 10-minute presentation video that shows the youth training the dogs and what our program is all about. We are looking for new board members, potential board members, um, you know, just volunteers for some of the certain things that we do. Just whatever it is you want to do to help, we will find something for you to do. This is your chance to get involved. This is your chance. And this is a great program, Get on the Ground Floor. We're in our first year as a yeah. nonprofit organization, and we're so proud of what we've accomplished in a year. And it really has been a lot. You know, we've heard from some of the teens already, but I'd like to point out that um, I believe you said 98% of the dogs that you train or mm -hmm. the teens train are adopted. Right, and we have two then, that are in the program right now that just hadn't been adopted. They just graduated a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, so they get to come back through the program. Um, you know, the dogs, if they're not adopted mm -hmm. right away, then they continue with us until they are adopted. That's, that's great. Why would you say these dogs be a, a benefit for families? Well, they're a little more socialized. They get, you know, handled and trained every day, you know, two hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, the, probably the biggest drawback, I'll just go ahead and say that, is that they still live in a kennel. They're not house dogs. You know, they're still living in a kennel. So people still have to take responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. And some of them are house trained, you know, but we don't know that because we don't do that aspect. We do have them indoors and, you know, we know if they have accidents or not or if they have the capability mm -hmm. to then that's usually the number one thing is people want to know is if the dogs are house trained sure. or not. But as far as good manners, we teach them, you know, to walk on a loose leash, to sit and stay. Uh, if they pick up something like your sock or your shoe, you can tell them to drop it and they'll spit it out. You know, things like that. What has the community support been already? I know it's a new nonprofit, but I'm sure there's already been a show of support for it to grow as much as it has. It really has, and it's one of the things we did this year was clean up at the dog show, the Face City Kennel Club dog show, and they paid us for that, and the youth came out and volunteered their time to come out and do that, so that was awesome. Um, you know, the Obedience Training Club of Wichita Falls has been a huge supporter, letting us use their air-conditioned facility because it was very hot this summer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got, you know, they paid the electric bill and let us use that facility. You know, we just clean up and, you know, keep it tidy and stuff. We can't, cannot say enough how much we appreciated that. Well, if you would just like to leave Texoma this morning with a final thought on pause for greatness and... I think it really does make a difference in our community because uh, we're teaching our youth to give back. I mean, they're doing community service. A lot of it is volunteer hours. Some of them are doing community service for hours that they need to earn, but they're learning to give back to the community in a positive way um, and saving a life of a homeless shelter animal, plus learning all the values of 
taking care of an animal, you know, so that we can help end the pet overpopulation problem, especially in our community. And I think the kids, they said it pretty well, you know, how to be a responsible pet owner and, and spaying and neutering and things like that. So I, I, I do think it's important and very important. Oh, and one more person I want to thank or entity is the Animal Services Center of Wichita Falls. Um, every session we take a tour there and we don't sugarcoat it for the kids. We go in and the, the director, Katrina Mitchell, is, is very direct and tells them, um, you know, how it is, you know, how much time the animals have, why they only have that much time and things like that, you know, and what we can do to help. And they'll tell you foster, adopt, spay and neuter. And one of the things that kids always say is just build more fences, build more cages to put them in. And, you know, we just have to explain to them it just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about us being responsible. Definitely a thought to leave us with this morning. So we, again, appreciate your time and appreciate you all coming to share so much about this organization, this nonprofit, and um, we are excited to watch you grow as well in this community and have you back and learn much more about Paws for Greatness in the future. So thank you, Diane. Well, thank you, Ashley, and we'll be back. All right, sounds good. <laughs> and thank you, Texoma, for joining us. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for another look inside Texoma.